Hi, this video is going to be about uh, breeding and selection, and here is a problem. The narrow sense heritability of egg weight in chickens in one coop is 0 0.5. A farmer selects four heavier eggs by breeding a few chickens with heavier eggs. He finds a difference in the mean egg weight of 9 grams between selected and unselected chickens. By how much can he expect egg uh, weight to increase in the selected chickens. And if you know how to solve this problem, you may stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own. And when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And before I will show you how to solve this problem, actually it can be done under 30 seconds, it's a very easy problem. I want to show you the theory behind it. So imagine that uh, here is a graphic and uh, in this coop we have uh, x of the different weight. So for example mean would be 100 grams, so 100 and this would be mean of the original um, uh, sample, so mean of the original uh, generation. And here we have uh, on this shoulder uh, the X that weighed less than 100 grams and on this shoulder we have X that weighed more than 100 grams. For example, uh, here we may have uh, X that weighed uh, say uh, 90 grams and here we may have uh, that weighed 80 grams. And on, on the other shoulder we may have uh, uh, those eggs that weighed uh, 110 grams and 120 grams. So of course for selection we would prefer this shoulder and uh, we would select those individuals that produce uh, eggs uh, that is heavier. So we take uh, this X and as you see uh, we have between 100 grams and 120 so the mean new mean would be uh, about 10 grams more than original mean here so this would be mean of our selection once again we selected between 100 and 120 so the new mean would be 110 and this is about uh, uh, 10 grams more than original. So here we have in our problem 9 grams. So uh, now we have to predict what we are going to get in the following generation or F1 generation. If you think that a uh, new wave would look like this this would be too easy and this is not exactly what we should expect in the next generation. So uh, the new mean should be somewhere over here between original mean and mean of selection. So we call this response to selection or uh, R stands for response to selection and actually a uh, new wave would look like this so here would be the new mean and as you see we have uh, here uh, progress in the weight but not uh, as much as we expect why this happens and this is uh, explanation so imagine that uh, all the uh, eggs here weight more than, uh, for example, uh, eggs here on this shoulder. But uh, we cannot say that uh, all of the uh, parents that produce this eggs would be genetically superior than all of this. Um, here is a formula. Let me remind you that total phenotypic uh, uh, variance that would be variance P would equal to variance genetic 
plus variance environmental. So, in order uh, for uh, best results, we need uh, best genetics and best uh, environment. So, uh, some individuals, for example, here that would be very, very few, may show even uh, better uh, results. For example, they may have eggs that weight 130. Maybe there is only one such uh, egg in the whole coop. And uh, as you see, uh, when we select uh, here, some of the individuals might have uh, superior genetics, but this is not always the case. Some of them may have uh, genetics that would be from here, but they were lucky to happen to be in the very good uh, environmental uh, conditions, so they would show uh, better results because uh, phenotypic variance is uh, genetic variance plus uh, variance environmental. So even if uh, we have uh, some um, genetically um, not superior uh, parents, they still may produce very good results if uh, the conditions where they raised would be very good, would be superior. And vice versa, we may find uh, some of the eggs here uh, that were produced by superior uh, parents with superior genetics, but such uh, parents happen to be raised in the worse uh, environmental conditions. For example, if uh, the nutrition would be least, of course we expect that uh, the results, uh, weight of the X also would be less. And um, this explains why we have uh, here a regression to the mean. So this explains why a uh, new generation mean wouldn't be the same as the mean of selection. This explains why we have regression to the original mean. But still, it uh, also wouldn't be the same as uh, mean original because here still we have superior genotypes. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, some uh, genotypes can be here present that is uh, not superior, just happen to be in the best environmental conditions. And this explains why we have regression to the mean. So why we have uh, regression to the mean here. So this would be our response to uh, selection here. And uh, of course, you shouldn't expect a selection to be something like this. So this is would be mean. And we choose uh, here, for example, the best uh, results. And we shouldn't expect that in a new generation the new mean would be here. So it's more like two steps forward and one step back. So uh, we should expect that a uh, new mean should be somewhere between. So uh, selection always look like this because we never can uh, make ideal uniform environmental conditions. Even Imagine that uh, when we have uh, the whole field of uniform plants, genetically uniform, for example, highly inbreed for 10 generations, or uh, if we would have uh, hybrids that also would be genetically uniform, still we would be able to find in such a field plants that can be taller, smaller, uh, due to just environmental factors that never can be uniform. Uh, some parts of the film may have uh, some, uh, say, uh, um, pest infestation, some may have more water, some may uh, have more uh, nutrients in the soil. So uh, we never can uh, reproduce ideal uh, environmental conditions. And of course, uh, here, when all these individuals here that we select for uh, 
that we select in order to produce best results uh, would be able only to um, give to the following generation their best genetics but uh, uh, superior environmental conditions uh, couldn't be inherited. That's uh, once again why we have this regression to the mean and uh, response uh, mean of the uh, response to selection that is going to be between original and uh, mean of the selected individuals. So now uh, I hope uh, you understand why we have uh, this regression to the mean and uh, we can solve uh, our problem. And in order to solve our problem we have to use another formula where R response to selection equal to h small squared and this is uh, stands for the narrow sense heritability and multiplied by uh, mean of selection. So now we can uh, use uh, real numbers in order to solve this problem. So response to selection would be h squared that is 0 0.5 multiplied by the uh, mean of the selection and we know that uh, this is uh, 9 grams so this is plus 9 grams so as uh, you see here we have uh, 100 original mean and we selected between 100 and 120 so new mean uh, about plus 9 grams so we have to multiply by 9 and our new response to selection number would be 4.5 and this is going to be our answer and this is a result that we are going to expect in the following generation in the F1 generation so we expect uh, to have uh, X that is going to be by uh, 4.5 grams weight more than uh, mean of the original uh, population. So here we would have plus uh, plus 4.5 grams. Those we selected with the mean of selection that were 9 grams. But uh, actually uh, with the rule two steps forward one step back we got results that is 4.5 grams and um, this is all for today I just want to tell you that if you want to find more about uh, what I told today please uh, search uh, Google about uh, Johansson first experiment and uh, you would uh, see uh, more details about what I explained today and this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your uh, comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.